Hi, Robin Heppel here. And on today's show, I'm going to talk about how funeral homes can deal with negative online reviews. Welcome to another episode of the Funeral Strategy and Marketing Show. Now, before I dive into today's topic, I want to let you know to stick around to the end of the episode because I have a special gift for you. What it is, is a free resource that I created called the Revenue Per Call Calculator. It's an Excel spreadsheet that you can use to track the additional revenue you would get by getting additional calls, or maybe how much you might be losing in revenue if you lose calls. So it's a handy little uh, spreadsheet that you can use and play around with and uh, maybe think of for if you're able to gain 10% market share, how is that going to relate to your business from a financial perspective? Now let's get into today's topic. How did it feel the first time that you saw that you had a negative review? Were you mad? Did you get sad? Probably not. You were probably really mad. And most of the time, these are not legitimate. And there's just some jerk out there that feels that they've got to try to take a shot at you. Maybe it's even a competitor. But you know what? We've got some strategies that uh, I'm going to share with you today that will put you in the driver's seat for dealing with negative reviews that happen and also to prevent negative reviews from coming onto your profiles. So recently on Facebook, I was asked by a friend of mine, Kim Stacy, on how to deal with negative reviews. And I was sharing some of my experiences. As, uh, as I've mentioned before, uh, I've had a couple of opportunities to help people get, help funeral homes get negative reviews taken off of places like Yelp and Google reviews. So the first thing that let's, Let's just take one step back. I've heard some bad advice out there. Now, you, my, past, my last episode was hearing opinions and uh, talking about opinions and advice. So there's, there was some bad advice. People are saying, well, don't respond to a negative review because if you do, that will actually make that review more popular and come up towards the top. And <clears throat> if that's the case or not, I, I'm not, I don't know. But even if it is, I'd rather have a negative review that is responded to than having a negative review with no, with no response. That is way worse. Because if we go through the process that we're going to talk about today, it's going, you're going to look so much better than the person leaving the negative review. Okay, the first step. Ask yourself, it's a, is it a legitimate complaint? And if it is, then you've got to clean up some stuff at the office. What what happened? Dig into it. Find out. What did were you having a bad day? Was a staff member having a bad day? And if it was a process that was an oversight, then maybe put a system into place that prevents that from happening again. So you have some more checks and balances. And if it was legitimate, then I would reach out to the person, try to phone them offline and let them know, you know, say thank you for letting me know about this. We've taken these steps to rectify it. And uh, is there anything else that we could do to make this to make this better? Once you've done that, you can then go on to the review site and actually kind of as a follow up, say, thank you so much for talking to me on the phone. I uh, thank you for explaining the situation further. We have done these steps so that this won't happen again. So for all the people that are watching, they're going to see that you're taking a very proactive approach to any time that something that something happens like this. Now, what if it's not a legitimate complaint? What if it's your competitor down the street that's paying someone to leave that or something? I'm not saying that that happens, but I think we think that that's what happens. But what if it's just some jerk trying to bring you down? So here's what you do. You, you still want to reach out to them and take it as a specific, legitimate complaint, but ask a couple of probing questions, such as find out when the service was, or even for who the service was for. And when you do this, people are going to see that you're actually trying to solve the problem. So again, it goes back to people saying, well, don't respond to it, because people are no, are they? Yes, they are going to read the negative review, but they're also going to read your response. And if your response is very professional and you're not flying off the handle, that's going to even be more credit 
to you if you've gone and tried to solve the problem. So a couple of things that are going to happen here is more than likely they're not going to respond, right? If you're being nice, it's really hard for them to be angry again if, if they are real jerks. Uh, you know, they might, and, and then you would, and if they do, you just respond in a very polite manner again, say that you're, you know, doing everything you can to try to resolve that. You would hope that, um, uh, you would hope that they would uh, meet you kind of halfway or meet you in trying to resolve the issue. This is why I like to call this the olive branch approach, because you're kind of extending the olive branch here. Now, more than likely, though, they're not going to respond. And after a week or so, if they don't respond, you can then uh, contact, whether it's Yelp or Google or whoever, and say, uh, you know, we, there's been this uh, uh, review on, on your website about our company, and we take this really seriously. We've tried to reach out to the person and try to rectify the issue, and they are not responding. So um, also, it seems that there could be a little bit of hearsay uh, in there or secondhand information, and I believe that's against your terms of service. Could you please check into that for me? Both times that uh, I've been involved in this process, one line that the person who's flying off the handle puts in there that actually makes their uh, complaint um, outside of their terms of service, the website's terms of service, and they'll delete it. So both times we've had them deleted, but you can't just ask them to delete it. You have to kind of go through this process. So it might take a week or two, but um, it's well worth it. So then what you should do so that this doesn't happen again is have a proactive approach. And what, what I like to do is let clients know that, first of all, just go back the last a uh, year or so to all the raving fans that you've had, the people that have sent you those awesome thank you cards. And I know that you probably have a shoebox full of them. Hopefully you're displaying them or even scanning them and putting them on your website if you get the family's permission. Um, and But what you should also do is then get those cards. And if it's someone who's like web savvy, uh, type out their response and email it to them and just say, you know, I really appreciate this great thank you card that you sent to us. We're honored to help your family at a very tough time. And uh, if you could just do me a small favor and share the same words or similar words to these to one of the online review sites, because a lot of people look for those when they're looking for a funeral home, and we would like to serve more families like you, like yours. And especially if you know someone quite well, they're probably going to do it. They just need to be asked. And you have to remember, you've helped them out at the toughest time of their lives. They're prob they probably will take the five minutes to do this. The next thing that you want to do is have a page on your website dedicated to this. And you could put uh, just a link to all the different websites that link right to your profile so you make it really easy for people to do that. Now, if for some reason one of those websites have a couple negative reviews, you may not want that on there at the beginning. But if you have a, maybe a close friend, you could just say, hey, could you go put one on here? We've got some negative ones, and uh, they're kind of stuck there. We've tried to get them removed, but they can't. But send them to, the, to other ones, especially uh, Google, uh, like Google Plus, your Google Plus page, or Yelp. And, um, and people will do this. They'll take the five minutes to do it. And a little trick is maybe even look in your, um, hopefully your, taking down clients' uh, email addresses, find any that are Gmail addresses and send it to them because then that means that they don't need to create an account to leave one on Google. So it's a little secret tip there. Actually, not too secret, but a little shortcut. Um, then what you should do is on a proactive basis, every time um, you have a, a card of thanks come in like that, you do the same. Send out the little email and have it... Um, have it have their part what they wrote uh, typed up. Obviously, leave out the part that oh, and you know, also submitted in the card is our you know the final balance of the payment. You know, you don't need to put that in there. And then um, and then send and then send that email to a to a link uh, to the link to the page. Or if they have a Gmail account, you can just send them specifically right to the Gmail account. 
Now, for, for those of you who have an aftercare program in place, and, and everyone should, um, because you can just put out so many little fires that I found. And I've uh, worked with a lot of people in aftercare. I've organized and created the aftercare program at McCall Brothers. And uh, it is now one of their best programs that they have there. They've got a great staff. But the uh, icing on the cake is uh, Audrey, who is their aftercare specialist. And what you should do then is have your Audrey or your, um, your, your aftercare person to, um, when they're sitting down with the families after the service, ask them, like, or they're going to know if someone's ecstatic about everything. Um, and if the person seems to be kind of web savvy, like maybe they're checking their iPhone and that type of thing right there, or they brought in their iPad, um, just say, hey, would you mind taking a few minutes and, and doing this and kind of going through the same process that, as I've explained for the uh, people who send in the cards. And, uh, you know, because right then when they're so happy and they've just said, oh, everything you did was so great, um, you know, don't do it in the first two minutes. But, uh, you know, maybe halfway through the the appointment, just bring it up to say, oh, you know, one thing that we ask, especially people who are so pleased with what we've done, if you could just take five minutes to just leave a, a nice uh, online review for us. Uh, here's the web page. If they have their iPhone, uh, they could do it right there. You could even just have a QR code that they can scan or just type in the, the web address. Then they can click on the links from your website and fill it, they could fill it out right there. A word of warning is don't have them log in on your computer. So if, if they're there and they have to log in, if Google sees that all these reviews are coming from the same IP address, they're going to think it's a little fishy. So don't do that. But nowadays, the people the people who I would approach are the people walking around with their um, iPhones or Androids or iPads, and uh, just ask them if they would if they would do that. So that's a real proactive way of making sure that uh, negative reviews don't uh, don't harm you. Because what will happen is, you know, if someone's being a real jerk and they want to give you a negative review. And if they go to a place where there's 20 positive reviews and they're all four out of five stars or five out of five stars, um, they're going to look like a real idiot trying to give you a one or a zero or, or whatever. So that's just something to, um, to keep in mind. And uh, it's, just, it's just the way it is. You, um, whether you want to participate in this or not, uh, it's going to happen. There's going to be online reviews. And as Google is continually changing their algorithm of how websites rank, online reviews are playing more and more of a factor. So now I um, just want to share with you a couple of things that have been happening here at uh, Funeral Futurist. Uh, it's been a busy summer and um, getting ready just next month. We've got our funeral boot camp. Um, so we've got the brochures. Uh, they've been mailed out. We've mailed them to funeral homes in Ohio and, and the, uh, the border states around Ohio since it is going to be in Cleveland. Uh, we're also getting ramping up for Funeral Rock Stars 2 in November at Planet Hollywood in Las Vegas, and also getting ready for NFDA in Austin in October. So it's going to be a busy fall, and we're really looking forward to it. Another thing that we've been doing, we've launched um, three now, three cremation arrangement websites. And uh, the great thing about these are that uh, they're very easy to use. Um, they actually, what we do is we try to get the payment first and then get them to fill in the form second uh, because it's better to get the cash in and uh, have them make that commitment and then have them go into um, filling out the forms and, and uh, authorizing the documentation and, and that type of thing. Uh, the other thing is that uh, all of our sites are mobile responsive, meaning that they work, uh, they fully function on um, from your computer to your laptop to your iPad to your phone. So um, if you're interested in those, uh, just shoot me an email and uh, I can give you some more information on that. Um, also, too, if you have any questions that are you know just burning about strategy, competition, marketing, uh, leave them here. You know, leave a comment and uh, ask a question or send me an email at robin at funeralfutures.com and I'd be glad to answer them. I can answer them privately or, or even answer them right here on the show. Um, if, you, um, if you have a comment, 
too, I'll read the comment out and give you a little plug and a little link back to your Funeral Homes website. So, um, and links, uh, although they're not as important as they used to be, they still are very important. And, um, you know, getting getting the link from my site is uh, going to be a, a benefit to to you and just a little a little another tick in your favor for um, getting you up in the rankings. Now, um, another resource that I want to share with you is you may have seen some of our banner ads, but we are now offering what we call our local SEO audit. So um, I'll leave a link in the show notes of how you can uh, get that for free. We're, uh, we'd normally charge $50 for this, but um, what we do is we create a 14-page, 15-page report, and it shows a lot of the elements of uh, the different ranking factors that are affecting your website. So some on-site um, factors, so meaning how your website's built, but mostly off-site factors. So uh, it's going to talk about links. It's going to talk about uh, local listings and things like this um, that you need for um, the online reviews and what they call citations uh, online. So you want to kind of build that up. And this report um, shows you what to do and a lot of things you can just do on your own. So it's not that... Uh, um, it's just uh, it's not just a sales pitch or anything like that. It's a good, solid um, resource for you that you can uh, kind of work away on and improve your overall online presence. Now, uh, so just to, as we wrap up here, um, when you're talking about online reviews, when you get a negative one, three things. First of all, investigate it to see if it is legitimate. And, and if it is, solve it. Next, you want to go with the olive branch approach, approach and, uh, and respond to them online, always taking the high road, doing it in a very professional manner because millions of people are watching. They're watching if you don't do anything, and they're also watching what you do do. So you have more control if you do do something, and if you're going to do it, make sure that it's positive. And third, start a proactive program to cultivate more reviews, uh, especially with your aftercare program. And just a quick little challenge for you. Um, and if you if you do this, leave a little comment. Uh, just go back the last six months. Find, you know, you've probably served someone that you've known quite well and probably things, you know, because you've probably gone above and beyond for them, like what you do for all your client families. And uh, just ask them if they would leave an online review for you. Uh, and I'd, I'd love to know your success and how that went. And if you get one, send me a link to where the review was. Um, and I'd love to see it. So with that, um, once again, thanks for spending your time with me today. I really appreciate it. My goal for you is for you to serve more families and provide them more meaningful services. That's what I do with uh, with this, this show and also with my business. I just want to make sure that you can do a better job serving more families. So make sure you check back soon for another episode of the Funeral Strategy and Marketing Show. This is Robin Heppel.